Hey folks, it's Michael Collins again, EnviroReporter.com on August 23rd, 2011. It's about 9.45 at night and now we've taken a new background uh, in radiation station to determine, uh, to be able to, you know, gauge any overages. Uh, we got overages in our first testing of this bag uh, and what we got showed that uh, even testing this seaweed from Japan with the bag, uh, we had uh, an overage of 54.2% uh, uh, over background. Uh, and that is uh, significant. And uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the bag and uh, unseal it, take out this uh, uh, seaweed and test it straight on the seaweed. First I got to take it out of the bag. Don't know if any radioactive gases will be released upon opening the bag, but I'm just going to have to take my chances. There it is. So I'm just going to grab that. And there we go. Uh, it's just a little salt pack we had earlier. Which you saw in the first video. So I'm going to move the packaging away. And change my gloves. And get ready to handle the inspector. What we're going to do is we're just going to sort of check out the surface of this seaweed called kelp and other places I understand it and uh, then we're going to take a 10 minute average this is a food product I bought in a store in Los Angeles yesterday very popular and so we're getting the inspector ready and here it is and the last background we got in here was 40.6 counts per minute. So now we're going to go down on here and see what's up. You can hear the ticking. I'm going to get rid of this uh, salt bag. We don't know where this seaweed is from in Japan. We just know that it is from Japan. This is where we tested last time, right in the middle. Now, let's test again. Let's do an average. Turn it off, go to the timer. Good to go on 10 minutes. We're just going to let it rest on there. Now, of course, you're probably wondering what if uh, that seaweed's contaminated? Aren't you going to get it on your detector? Well, that, that thing around the detector actually can be washed, and that is what I would do. What we're looking for here is any overage over background. Now, since we had a an overage of 54.2% first time around with the plastic bag there, we I would imagine that we would uh, get that amount uh, around that amount. We'll find out if we get more than that amount. 
Now mine, uh, you know, with the bag off it. If we get more than that amount, then we can attribute that to alpha radiation, which would have been stopped in the first testing by the plastic bag. Now, as you can see, and we've talked about before, radiation isn't a, a homogeneous thing, it's random. So it'll come in bursts. And mind you, we're just testing one spot on the seaweed. Now, a few days ago, Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates uh, told Solaray IMG that uh, Hillary Clinton signed a pact with Japan that she agreed there is no problem with the Japanese food supply and that we'll continue to buy their food and that we won't be sampling their food coming in from Japan. This is according to Arnie. Well, this is food from Japan. It's in America. It's in Los Angeles. I just bought it. Arnie also called on people who have Geiger counters. This is actually a nuclear radiation monitor, meaning it can detect alpha, beta, gamma, x-ray, and nuclear radiation. Um, for If it rains in their area and it reads hot, and hot using a detect uh, an inspector, as we've said before, is a, has a 15% margin of error. So if you get a reading over background that's within 15% of background, you can just toss the uh, result because it doesn't make the margin of error. However, my experience with the inspector, its uh, margin of error is pro uh, ranges between uh, 3 and 10%. So. If this uh, turns out to be uh, hot again, uh, we might just uh, contact Arnie and see if he's uh, interested in uh, testing uh, food stuff uh, off the shelves in Los Angeles. Gunderson said that uh, the Japanese aren't sampling their food enough and he is particularly worried about the next rice harvest in Japan ha harvesting radioactive rice and uh, then burning the stalks and the stalks uh, as Arnie says uh, eventually ends up into the Pacific Northwest either into British Columbia, Oregon, Washington or California the process of burning the radioactive material means that they're kicking the can down the road. Not a, not a uh, good scenario if you're downwind of folks having to burn contaminated uh, material. Sort of a double dose fallout wise. Gunderson might have access to a lab, which I do, but they're expensive, um, and uh, might want to be testing people's rainwater samples. In out shopping for this uh, food stuff from uh, Japan, one store I was in, it uh, there were other products from other countries on the shelves and actually uh, the American ones were uh, uh, hotter than a lot of the uh, Japanese ones.
Now, what does this mean? I mean, you could say, well, I'm not going to eat any Japanese seaweed. We're not saying you can't eat Japanese seaweed, by the way. We don't know where this was uh, harvested in Japan. There might be uh, large areas in their ocean, ocean around Japan, that is radiation free. There might not be. Uh, uh, there might be uh, large areas in the ocean that uh, are affected by this, and that is the uh, the uh, thinking. But if you eat this stuff and you say, hey, you know what, anything but Japanese seaweed. Well, actually, in uh, March, March 19th, 20th, and the 25th in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, iodine-131 was found in seaweed called kelp up there and um, that's just a little over a week after the meltdown actually yeah a little over a week after the meltdown began which was immediately you saw it probably the reactors exploding Now, when you talk about background radiation, as I've said before, talking about the uranium and radium in the soil, talking about uh, cosmic radiation from the stars and the, and the sun. So when you hear con radioactive contamination described in food or milk, dairy products, as being equivalent to, say, flying from Los Angeles to New York, that's uh, an inappropriate comparison. Uh, radiation, especially fissile radiation from melted down reactors. Uh, you ingest it, you breathe it in, you get it on your skin, you get it in your eyes, your nose, your ears. It can lodge itself in your body and continue to radiate. That will lead to cell destruction and uh, that can lead to cancer. Hence why we care a lot about just what uh, radionuclides we ingest. Now, the whole point to knowledge about this is, uh, not the whole point, but one of the main points is to try to lower your radiation load. So you try to control what you eat, try to know what's in your food radiation-wise, and that's not easy to do, not having a detector. But it is possible to do by networking with like-minded people like the great uh, forum we have on EnviroReporter.com in comments and our chat room. Um, there is so much wonderful, vital information that uh, is to be had there. Now, see how it's random, comes in bursts. Mind you, this is just over one spot. We picked the dead center of it. Every time you hear a click, see that light flash, watch the numbers go up. It's an ionizing event going through our detector. Got a two inch in diameter circle in the back. And now it is finished. It's 10 minutes. So I'm going to do a little math. We have, now, mind you, it keeps clicking and beeping. Uh, it keeps clicking and flashing, uh, but that's the total for 10 minutes. It just doesn't keep totally. So 679. Divided by 10 equals 67.9. Minus the background of 40.6 counts per minute. That's 27.3 counts per minute in excess of the background coming from that 
seaweed. And that is 67.2% over background. Now what we have before was 54.2%. So we have 67.2% over, not to be confused with the total number you have there. This is math I'm doing off screen. That's from alpha radiation. And that's not good. Stay tuned to EnviroReporter.com. Thank you. We look forward to your comments on this.